call the regular council meeting in 2020 order. Minutes. Minutes of the special council meeting held on May 14th, 2020 be adopted as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. And the recommendation that the minutes of the regular council meeting held on May 25th, 2020 be adopted as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Business rising to the minutes. And the Chief of <coughs> CAO status report be accepted as filed. Here's my name. Uh, one uh, correction to be made. Uh, agenda page 10. <coughs> the uh, first item there uh, is actually complete. Thank you. Moved as amended. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Committee reports? Economic Development, Councillor Peters and Councillor Coomber. Just a question. This is over and above the one we had that we've already set in motion? Or is uh, it the same one? It's built on from that one. The first one did was uh, actually guess uh, some of them know what they're talking about to put together the request for proposals. Yeah, which we have. And we're going to uh, put that one on BC bid and just ran out of time. There wasn't enough time to get it posted, get replies in, get the work done. So we uh, set to uh, this year to complete that project. <coughs> Discussion. All in favor? Carried. Budget and Administrative Services, Councillor Peters and Councillor Chilbert. Uh, Sophia Paul Martini, would you like to uh, comment? Well, I, uh, I looked at them, there are no reserves for the economic development, so if we are to use any funds, we have to use out of the landfill reserve. Okay. Any thoughts on that? We should. Uh, my preference would be to take money out of the landfill reserve fund and develop the uh, community foundation fund as quickly as possible. I'll move that. A second. Discussion. You said. And then what um, funds are you, were you talking about 25,000 or do you want to do 20,000 this year or 50,000? No, my preference would be to 50,000, yeah. Go ahead, Martin. Okay, maybe I'm misremembering here, but our half would be 25,000? Because the maximum they contribute is 25? No, no. 50 is maximum 50. Maximum 50, okay. So, and the uh, resolution then is for 25 or for 50? 50. And what are the funds going to be used for? Councilor Pittman, I left a um, on your desk. Yeah. The, um, this is still in, in really first stages of this. I noticed that Lillooet and Logan Lake have their own funds, so I've been in contact with Lillooet about theirs. So this is simply um, what uh, Lillooet is doing with theirs. Um, it's yet to be determined how much leeway we have in, in determining what we want to fund, but I think the intent is to be able to provide funds for local uh, groups, uh, and it also mentioned bursaries, um, perhaps individuals who want to uh, start an event. It's, I think it's pretty much uh, up to council what they want to, uh, how they want to shape this. 
Good morning. Uh, the monies are only supposed to go to uh, nonprofit organizations. Uh, so it's not for business assistance, it's not for individual assistance, it's strictly for nonprofit community groups. And I think the key point is that they don't touch the, the capital. They, they yes. just expend the, the, uh, the interest. And uh, the, for me, uh, the key point is that anybody in the community can tr contrib contribute through in kind or uh, through their will or trust or a number of different uh, uh, ways they can contribute to the fund and allow it to grow and allow us to uh, um, uh, give out tax receipts. Yes. seem to remember is that we can dip into the principal if we so choose, or if the foundation so chooses, but then we'd have to put that money back in and then the entity would match it 50-50 again. Um, that would be uh, great if you could clear that up. I'm not aware of that one. I thought it was a one-time contribution up to 50000 The uh, Lillouette's eligibility <coughs> criteria includes volunteer or service organizations from Lillouette. I've also seen on the BC Interior Community Foundation page that they provide uh, bursaries for local students as well. Maybe something we could look into. But uh, as I say, this is really early stages at this point. Um, BC Interior Community Foundation does manage funds for um, other communities such as Lillooet and Logan Lake. So if that is the case, that would take uh, a large burden off of our shoulders. Um, we would be left to um, form a local group that would accept applications and decide who, uh, who receives funding. And it's my understanding that that would be similar to the group that was formed, that was non, the non-political group that was formed to dispense the funds that were raised for cash aid. It would be a similar I think format. So. Similar concept, yeah. And in that case, we accepted applications and forwarded the recommendations on to council who approved the, the uh, individual checks and, count, and the village sent them out. I think, again, we'll have to double check on this, but I believe that it would be the, the foundation itself that makes those decisions, not council. Yeah, no. The, so, the group made the recommendations to council. Yeah, I'm talking about for this NDIT thing. I'm pretty sure that it's the foundation that makes those decisions. Oh, it's see. arm's length from council. It is not a body of council. So who is the foundation? We don't have one set up yet. That's the foundation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to do that before any of this takes place. And there is a uh, federal agency that oversees that and uh, uh, there's a requirement to be registered with that agency uh, before NDIT will uh, contribute any funding. I'd like to see all of that in place before we put any funds forward. If well, we do yeah. put funds forward, I think it's in a smaller chunk than $50,000 out of the legacy fund. Um, there is, you know, issues with our pool, nobody's really addressing that. And uh, I think we'll get a lot of backlash from... It's my understanding we're that. only allocating funds, we're not spending them at this time. Right, 50,000. Well, we're resolution. giving 50,000. No, we no, we're not giving anything at this particular point in time, we're allocating. We're yeah. putting that aside. Right for that. So you're put you're giving fifty thousand dollars to this foundation. No, it's still going right. to be the village's money for now until the foundation is formed, which could take upwards of a year. So at this particular point in time, it's just a shuffle into a, a reserve account that would be allocated to that. I think we'd be facing a lot of backlash myself from the, from the pool. So any further discussion? I think it's a great investment in Cash Creek's future. Um, we've suffered from a lack of funding for our community groups for a long time. I think uh, we put in a little bit of money, NDIT puts in a little bit of money, we ask uh, other uh, 
community members and businesses to put in a little bit of money. I think this is something that uh, we could call our legacy. It goes on forever for, for a long time and uh, helps keep our community going. I think it's probably the best investment we could look at at this point. And it's also meant to address the requests that council itself gets. So those would be then out of our budget and would be put out to the foundation. I just, the, the amount is very large. It's not something that um, is sitting well for me, given our financial situation year after year when we go through our financial reports. I think it's too high. Any further discussion? Do you have a second? Yes. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Carried. Opposed. Thank you. Take over, please. Okay. Martin. Detailed five year plan? Oh, he left one too early. Okay, yes, so he did. Bo Martini, would you like to uh, briefly? Yes, I provided the detail, the more detailed version of the financial plan. Uh, even though we went through that every single line item with the council, uh, the one that was presented last uh, council meeting was for reporting purposes, and it was literally summarized as requirements requested. So uh, this time I provide the more detailed version. Hopefully this is going to satisfy Councillor Pittman's uh, requests, but uh, I see no reason why we have to go through this commotion. No, I, I've gone through some. I do have some questions, um, but I'm still reviewing it, so I'll have those questions ready for them. CFO Martini, is this not what we discussed in that yes, closed meeting, line by line? Yes. And everybody had their opportunity to express their their I opinions just have at some that time. Questions on that. Okay. But we won't find out what those are until the next meeting. Um, on to the 2020 flood response costs. Uh, Councillor Pittman has requested the total cost paid out for flood response so far this year. Our CFO is in the process of compiling and filing all the claims that uh, have been received. As the village is still in the response stage of the 2020 freshet, all costs so far incurred are claimable for the EMDC. This information will be provided to council when it is available. Any comments? I just, I've shared with you um, the Webster's definition of conflict of interest as well as the community charter definitions um, that apply for uh, fiduciary, is that how you say it? Yes. Um, Amounts. There's been accusations put out of conflict of interest for Mayor in regards to our use of IBEX civil excavating um, during the flood response. Um, in order for it to have been conflict of interest, Mayor Tallarico would have had to influence the decision or made those decisions to use that company. Um, I'm offended at the accusations. Uh, as the logistics coordinator through the whole period of time, um, those decisions were made by myself in conjunction with the incident command and our EOC directors. Every time we used someone to do a job, I phoned every one of the people on this list and those people were called in a rotating order 
And the majority of the time, the first person who said yes was the person who did the work on our behalf. There were days that we had every single one of those contractors working. Um, and I just wanted to uh, put that forward to say that there was no impropriety, that there was no conflict of interest, and that um, costs were set are set by Blue Book, which is mandated by NBC. We the contractors have no control, and they all actually get paid considerably less than what their going rates are when they do work for us in an emergency situation and that it was a very level playing field and no one was given any special treatment. Councillor Pittman, any? Not on that one. Oh. Well, that's not it's what your email said. But it's in, in the response stage of the 2020 precedent, all costs of car will be provided to, to us in, in the future for number three. Oh, I'm responding to number four, actually, is what I was talking about. Okay, we move on to number four. Councillor Pittman has requested the total amount paid to TW Dynamics and IBEX. This information is required to be included in the annual report under council remuneration, expenses, and contracts as per section 168 <coughs> of the community charter and as such will be available prior to August 31st when the annual report is due. Does the uh, administration have any comment on that? Uh, well, the uh, information that we are required to uh, provide will be provided. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to have the uh, packet, the annual report, uh, ready or available for public, uh, for the public at least two weeks before uh, the deadline. Uh, we won't be waiting until as far as August 31st. We'll be doing that uh, unless something weird happens on a regular meeting in August so that uh, information should be ready in uh, early August. Thank you. And uh, the costs related to the berm, do we still want to keep the mayor uh, out in the other room for this? Uh, there's still a motion and costs related to berm removal and it was IBEX that uh, <coughs> removed that berm. Now okay. we're being, there is a discussion of conflict of interest. Uh, again, Mayor Tallarico did not have any influence or have any decision-making authority when IBEX was called in. I was the one who called them in for that one, and I can assure you that IBEX was the last one on the list that I called, and they were the only ones available. Okay, so costs related to burn removal, Councillor Pittman has requested costs related to the 2019 removal of a protected, protective berm placed during emergency response in 2017. This cost is not readily at hand as staff are still working on the 2020 flood response. As this project was undertaken as part of a flood recovery, all costs were 80% funded by EMBC. And uh, there's a recommendation that council direct staff to collect information on the total cost of the berm removal. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I would like to speak up and I would like to say something about this because it's becoming a bit of a toxic environment and um, I don't feel I should um, keep quiet. This is a small community and the council, at least on my part, is mandated to protect the village, the community, and engage the businesses within the community as much as possible. Conflicts of interest may arise or perceived con conflicts of interest, but the, because there is no decision making by the people perceived as conflict of interest, I don't think there is a conflict of interest. We can say very well that, okay, because Mayor uh, Talarico has his son operating a machinery should not be part of this recovery or 
responses, flood responses. Maybe we should not get our fleet cars being inspected at channels because there is some conflict of interest. They are getting inspected they at They are. Channers. They no, are. They, they are. I have the bills and I can prove they yeah, are. The one you've, so you've we can not employ now the machine shop because the spouse of one of our public work is employed there. So I don't understand why is this fixation. Because we as a council, we as an organization have to employ the businesses within the community. Yes. That is our businesses mandate. Within our community, yes, not the just businesses. one one organization. And I just want to clarify. I receive phone calls and questions and concerns about this. This is why I've asked for it to be on the agenda. You can answer them. People can read it, read the response, and make their own judgment. That's what I was elected to do, to come forward. Okay, and I would like and to so respond. And so that's why I'm saying and I that. have I have a logistics log that shows every single phone call and the time I made them, and each and every one of those contractors were called. So it's not one contractor that we're using, we're using all of them. When they didn't come, it was because they were on other jobs, they didn't have the equipment available to do it, or they uh, just chose not to. Mm -hmm. Well, so, I, like I said, I've received phone calls and that's why it's here. And I'm just saying that it was a fair and e equal system so. that was used and I have backup to prove it. It's good to get these things yes, out it the is. It's, a, it's important so the people have it called ask questions, I'm asking, you're giving the response. If they want further information, they can I would just ask. like ask that you stop sending me emails saying that um, I've been listening to the past year and it's time we stop all the conflict of interest issues and represent the citizens of Cash Creek and not our own personal egos and financial gains. I find that offensive. And that's to quote an email you sent to me. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Any further comments on the motion? The motion is to actually have a question. <coughs> Can staff tell us how much time this will take up? And we have we're in a backlog of 2020 at this time. Uh, we have what about two more EAF to process. We still have several that we're waiting to get uh, funding on. Then we have to get all that information together. Once we have that together, then we can start looking at uh, past years and uh, pull those numbers out. Uh, and uh, yeah, my, my own off the top of my head guess, uh, total staff time, everyone included, is probably going to be about three hours, maybe four. And I think this will probably be included in number three, the 2020 flood response costs anyway. I would think so. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion? All opposed? So, pardon me, I saw, uh, what was the vote again? Two to two. Two to two. two, to two. <coughs> Ties <and> defeated. to him in particular, but Six, I presume. Yes. 
Council directs staff to collect information on companies paid over 20,000 in 2019 year. Go ahead, Martin. Uh, I say then here in the preamble to this that uh, there's no community charter requirement uh, and there isn't. However, I was not aware of the financial, BC Finance Act or something like that, I can't remember. The one where we have to submit our statements of financial information and that does require this. Mm -hmm. So uh, it will be again included with the annual report in August. Fair enough, thank you. Policy and bylaw review. Myself and Councilor Peters. Thank you. Well, it works at community facilities. Myself and Councilor Defoe. The only thing I had a question in regards as to um, what is the status of the park at this point in time? Is it still closed? Yes, it is. The ground is far too wet for uh, any activities in there. Uh, when it becomes more clear that uh, the playground is going to be accessible to people, we will be putting up signs uh, just warning people that uh, this that the equipment is not disinfected and to please. Uh, disinfect when you get disinfect yourself and your children when you get home and police them so that they're not touching a piece of equipment and then touching their face. People are telling me that they, uh, there are folks who are using the picnic tables just inside the, uh, well, over by the swimming pool, just inside the, uh, the fence uh, because there's no uh, tape around preventing people or telling, letting people know. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. We'll make some signage available for those picnic tables as well as the, uh, the exercise stations. Any further? Village Services Liaison, Councillor DePaul, Councillor Thunberg. Um, Gold Country held their elections. Um, as well, um, Steve is still the chair at this time. Uh, Terry Raymond is the vice chair. Sally Watson is the treasurer. I am the secretary. Jack Jays and Sandy from Clinton is the directors of Archer. Um, as well, the Sunflower Project. Um, that is a new uh, project that just, just began, well not just began, but um, you are gonna see a lot of that on Facebook. Please uh, look for it on Facebook and take a look. It's a really great project. Um, especially with COVID. It's something that you can do wherever you are. Um, and it's positive, and I think that's great. Other than that. How did things go with it? Oh, Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. With the uh, ESS? Is it? The ESS training? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we had six people that are now trained to do the online uh, moderniz modernization tool. Um, which will be um, very valuable in an event because the process is like streamlined and my volunteers really enjoyed it. And I have more volunteers that want to be trained and now that I'm trained, I can train anybody else. Oh, too. Ooh, awesome. So at this point in time, the only thing and challenge that we face is of course technology. We don't have a whole lot of communities as, a, as an entity as ESS. So we'd have to use our own devices at this time. Um, but I do need to set up one thing, and that's just uh, an ESS email that goes through the village for submitting the forms to the suppliers <coughs> in the future. But at this moment in time, um, we can print them off for the, the people the evacuees to take to the suppliers. So that it's kind of similar to the process that's being done now. Um, also, we will always keep the paper base um, in place um, because you never know when you're not going to have electricity. So. Mm -hmm. This is cash free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that being said, it's great steps for our team, for our community. So, awesome. Oh, very valued, good. very valued group of volunteers. The uh, uh, issues with the uh, evacuation and alerts and orders. I got a few phone calls. Um, other than that, there is this reassurance to, to read the, the, the public updates that were posted. And if they had any questions, to just call the office if, if they had some. Um, other than that, there wasn't really a whole lot of issues. Most of the concerns were just, what do I do if I, if I have animals? Or um, where will I be able to stay? And those sorts of things. And 
for the most part, people were just trying to be prepared, which is great, because we want people to be prepared. One more thing. Um, this Friday night, the grads are doing their, they're going to line the street in their, in their formals, and then they're going to do a parade through town. And I've been in contact with our fire department, I think the school is driving, yeah, we're in the fire department, <laughs> leading that one. Um, so our fire department, Cash Creek's, or Ashcross Fire Department, BC Ambulance, and RCMP are all going to be involved in it as well. So, so if you're standing outside, bang a pot, scream and yell, let's give them some attention. This isn't the grab they had planned their whole lives for. So anything we can do to help, to me, is a good thing. What time is it? Um, they're, they're lining the street at 5.30 and the parade will start at six. 6. And they'll do Cash Creek and then they'll go down and do the same thing in Ashcroft. They'll line up, I guess, at the school. No, nope, actually, they changed it today. It's oh. now on Elm Street. Elm yeah. Street. Okay. Elm Street. Yeah. And then they'll do the parade through Ashcroft. So, yeah. Good for them. They're trying. Yeah. And uh, Gary Winslow and Megan Winslow used the community hall on Friday, last Friday and Saturday, and I stopped in on Saturday and cleaned the bathrooms. I had told them I would come and help clean between people, and he was spending. They were spending upwards over an hour with each family taking pictures however the family wanted them taken. Just a, such a great, great contribution. And then because of the anticipated high water we had, um, the, for, the river forecast that we had, we asked him to move on Sunday and he went down and accommodated them and they did it there as well. So I think that most of the grads were- There's still some of that need to. That need to, that and, and they're still them. going to yeah set it up so that they can get their pictures done. Mm -hmm. Which is great. So, just an awesome contribution. Nice. Protective services, myself, Mr. Kilmer. Sure. Council information results of the 2020 Cash Creek Volunteer Fire Department elections are attached. If you want to review page 18. Um, Fire Chief is Tom Moe, First Assistant Chief, Damien Couture, Assistant, Second Assistant Chief, Alana Peters, and uh, for the uh, Firefighters Association, Chairman is Ian Miller, Vice Chair is Alana, Secretary Damien, Treasurer Bill Elliott, and Entertainment is Mike Shepard. So I would move that Council receive and file the election results report from Fire Chief Moe. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, I'll, and to uh, Mr. Defoe as well. First tenure, first assistant chief, 2017 yes. to 2020. And those were the critical years. And we had, of course, the wildfires in 2017, 2018, yeah. floods. Yeah. And in conjunction with uh, the regular fire call of duty. So uh, certainly like to thank him for his dedicated service and he's still on the fire department so we thank him for his volunteer efforts all of them services for uh, got the contract for regional housing needs assessment for village of Cash Creek, Ashcroft, uh, excuse me, maybe not Ashcroft, I can't remember the other communities offhand. The important one anyway, of course, is Cash Creek. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just like old times. <laughs> area O is the only area that I remember, but uh, uh, they were uh, selected uh, with their bid of uh, supplying the housing, regional housing needs assessment for the regional district, which we opted to get into. And the Ashcroft Hospital uh, had a capital equipment funding grant approved for $330,000 for their nurse call system. And it would be an upgrade to 
all the nurses are uh, called from uh, the different rooms, I would assume, from what uh, I understand. And we had a, a meeting with MPE uh, Brad Biss, <coughs> and uh, we got on the regional hospital uh, discussion again, um, and our thoughts on how that should be handled. And uh, the actual uh, meeting was to deal with funding avenues for some things that we would like to uh, take on in our community, but the majority of the uh, time allotted to us was taken up with our hospital discussion. And uh, we did touch on the funding streams for various other things as well, but overall a productive meeting. The Association of Canadian Cannabis Retailers. A letter of support. consider deferring this until such time as we have our study in place? I believe this is just more about giving a level or playing field to the private suppliers because you can still buy online from the BC Cannabis store, but you cannot buy online. I went online to see. <laughs> see, I, I, I would have found that out in yeah. our report, but I didn't know that. Yeah, and um, the private stores cannot yeah. do online yeah. orders. This, this is strictly regarding provincial and federal legislation, yeah. so really anything that we do wouldn't be applicable to this. So no, there's no need to wait for us to get our stuff put in place first. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Information correspondence. business. Thank you, Christina, for doing this up for our property tax notice 2020. All right. That's very, very informative. It gives, uh, I think, for me as a layperson, a uh, clear understanding as, of how our, uh, we collect our money and where, uh, what we actually collect for ourselves and not for other government entities. It's very clear. Thank you very much for doing that. That's a good step in the right direction in identifying the uh, uh, where uh, municipal tax dollars are collected and for what entities and making that clear. Thank you. You said that for some people so that this is second property tax notice they have to pay. Well, we'll gladly receive the second <laughs> where we can yeah. use it. So, any other uh, new business? <clears throat> questions from the public? Questions from the press? Yes? Um, so right now, that $50,000 uh, from NDIT is not guaranteed. This whole grant that would be written in the future. This is just something you want to get set up for. That's correct. Um, you mentioned interest. Is this, would this money be able to be put into the bank to gain interest? Is that the, the idea behind it? That's absolutely. Um, and <coughs> last question, uh, you weren't necessarily in the room, so I might ask Councillor Coomber, as she was acting at the time. Um, in the case of the defeated vote, just to clarify, uh, we will not be seeing the numbers because the council has defeated the motion. Is that number five? That would be all, all, all of that. She's asking to see five. numbers. Number five, yes. Um, uh, we determined that those costs would most likely show up in the number three, the 2020 flood response costs. Okay. So we didn't need a... Second go around. Yes. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you. Mark? Uh, thank you, through the chair. Could I please get the wording of the motion that was defeated? Uh, because it was a tie vote. The uh, motion read that council directs staff to collect information on the total costs of the burn removal. Okay, thank you. Any 
further. So good. All right. I don't have a, a motion to move into the closed session. Uh, second. All in favor? Good. Thank you.